Hello, my sweet little baby reader pops. I've been wanting to do this video ever since I even started making book videos, which was only two videos ago, so I thought I would take you into Barnes & Noble with me and kind of react or show books that I'm interested in in the bookstore because I love seeing people's reaction to books. And then I'm going to do a little collective haul of books that I bought over the past month or so, which is also basically my TBR list. So you get a sneak peek at what I'm reading next. I would love to go to Half Price Books more because that was my childhood or just a local book store but all of them literally all of them are a minimum of 45 or 50 minutes away which is a little bit tragic for me but anytime I'm in the city I do go to those instead but for now this is the closest thing remotely near me so we're gonna see what they have okay honestly I did a horrible job in Barnes & Noble because there will be one person and being by myself scary to film here's some books that I have reactions to it happened one summer by Tessa Bailey I read this at the beginning of the month you will see my review featured and people we meet on vacation I mean everyone talking about these. This is what I came for. I needed the sequel to the Get a Life Chloe Brown series and I didn't see it on this shelf and I freaked out but then I found a different shelf and they had it. And then this is their tiny little Colleen Hoover section. I wish my Barnes and Noble had a huge one like other ones do. I did some damage. Ever since getting re-obsessed with books they've been in a bag shortage and I've never gotten a Barnes and Noble bag. Next time I'll bring my tote bag but for the novelty I just wanted to own one Barnes and Noble bag for some reason. Let's go home and show you. Oh my god. I've never been more excited about these books in my entire life. I'm so excited. I'm whipping out the nice camera for this book haul so you can see these books in HD. Let us start with the most recent purchase today. Now, this one's a little bit tragic because if you watched my last book video, you would know that I went to Barnes & Noble because it said online that they had November 9th by Colleen Hoover and I walked in and thought they didn't. But today I saw two on the shelf and I was like, did I just miss that last time or is this actually new? Because I would have read it in last week's vlog, but I found it. There were only two. I'm so excited to read this. I kind of want to read all of her books and then make a video ranking them all. I've already read three of her books, so this will be my fourth, which is crazy because it doesn't even feel like I was trying to read her books. I just, it just kind of happens that way when you start reading Colleen Hoover, you know? Next up, I now have the full Brown Sisters trilogy. I am literally 20 pages away from finishing Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which is the first book. All of these are written by Talia Hibbert. And then the second book is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I think, I think this one would be my favorite. I think this is the one where he secretly reads romance books on his phone. Is this one where he's her bodyguard? Yes. Security guard. Okay, this one is a lot of people's favorite, I think, so I'm so excited to read this next. And then the last one is Act Your Age, Eve Brown. Oh yeah, she's the one who switches careers too often. That's pretty relatable, so... And how cute are these all together on a bookshelf? Everything about these books are so cute, like the handwritten stuff on the covers. I feel like they remind me of thumbnails that are handwritten. And even on the inside, there's like this little cat. I hope it doesn't say anything nefarious on the page. Look how cute that cat is. So yes, this will be my first romance trilogy that I've ever written. Written? No, didn't write, didn't, didn't not write it. This camera is crispy. Ever since reading The Atlas Six, oh my gosh, y'all need to read that. I feel like that's gonna go down as one of my favorite books this entire year. Um, I've really been craving a, another dark academia type book and this is one that came up when I looked it up. This is called A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. They're basically all in a school. They all have magic powers, kind of like Harry Potter, except there's no teachers and there's a bunch of monsters and people die really easily from them. I know that this book came under fire for some problematic theme, or not themes, but problematic things. Like for example, she talks about this girl with dreadlocks who basically gets this like bug eating disease that kills her and it just kind of is perpetuating that dreadlocks are dirty. I know she apologized on Twitter and then said that that would no longer be in any of the books going forward. So we'll see if my copy has that. I hope it doesn't because we don't need to be perpetuating that any further. So we will see what I think about this. I watched with Cindy's video about about this where she's talking about canceling a book and her thoughts about the controversy around this. So I'm gonna see for myself, get the full context and I will let you know my review. At this point, I'm collecting all books by C.S. Lewis. I genuinely think I wanna make it a goal to read every piece of literature he's ever made, which he also has made sci-fi books, which I didn't even know. Chronicles of Narnia is by him. You probably know that one, but he also writes tons of Christian books that are nonfiction and I love them with all of my heart. So I got The Four Loves, which is about affection, friendship, 
friendship, affection, friendship, eros, and charity. Basically how, how does love work in our daily lives, which is something I'm always trying to figure out. So I'm so excited about this. These books are fairly short. They're just usually a collection of his essays. And then The World's Last Night and other essays. This one is Essays on Temptation and Evil. Ooh. In these seven satirical yet poignant essays, C.S. Lewis tackles the temptation of evil. He challenges readers to decide how they would live on The World's Last Night. We are not the playwright. We are not the producer. We are not even the audience. Audience. We are on the stage. To play well the scenes in which we are on concerns us much more than to guess about the scenes that follow it. There's not an author or writing that I love more than his, and I hope that I read all of his books one day, all of his works. A lot of people find his stuff confusing at first, but I feel like once you really dive in, you get a feel for his writing style, and man, it's just... It's, it's literally the only style of writing that consistently blows my mind when I read it. It feels like my mind is actually expanding every time I read him, so love that. And now for books that I've gotten over the past month. I picked up this little guy just last night by Ma... 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 Mari McFarlane, we'll say that. This is a contemporary romance, I believe, and I have never seen anyone talk about it or anyone recommend it, but I really wanna start reading books that I've never seen recommended to see what I think, because there's no better feeling than actually discovering one for yourself. And that's how it used to be before the days of booktube and TikTok and all that sort of stuff. You just go to the library and read the backs of the book and then pick one that you seem genuinely interested in. So this one did that for me. Eve, Justin, Susie, and Ed have been friends since they were teenagers. Now in their 30s, the four are as close as ever. I love a good friend group in a book. So I was like, okay, I like that so far. But then in an instant, their lives are changed forever. So a bunch of secrets get revealed, I guess, maybe a tragic accident, we'll see. But then she's kind of questioning, were these really my friends ever? I don't know, it seems plot driven and character driven, which, what more could you ask for? And Sally Thorne left a review on the back. So that's a good sign, I think. Next, I got, oh, speaking of, Oh, that's Sally Rooney. Okay, I just realized I get Sally Rooney and Sally Thorne mixed up. Sally Thorne wrote The Hating Game. Anyways, I got The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I love this cover. I watched a video where she said, if you loved Beach Read, you would love this book. And I have been wanting to get the feeling that I got from Beach Read for so long now. So I'm really hoping she's correct. I'm pretty sure they try to give dating advice on the podcast, but none of them are dating. So they start fake dating each other. And then I'm sure love ensues. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. This will be my very first Sally Rooney book. She also wrote Normal People, which is her more popular one. People either love her books or really hate them. So I'm so excited to see what sort of reaction I have. Frances is a cool headed and darkly observant young woman, vaguely pursuing a career in writing while studying in Dublin. Ooh, I love that landscape. Her best friend is the beautiful and endlessly self-possessed Bobby. At a local poetry performance one night, they meet a well-known photographer. And as the girls are then gradually drawn into her world, Frances is reluctantly impressed by the older woman's sophisticated sophisticated home and handsome husband, Nick. But however amusing Francis and Nick's flirtation seems at first, it begins to give way to a strange and then painful intimacy. That sounds interesting to me. Apparently she writes dialogue without quotation marks and it's something you have to get used to. The Poppy War by R.F. Chang. Or wait, R.F. Quang, 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 Quang. Don't you think I of all people should be able to pronounce that? Um, I'm not sure. Quang, Quang. Huang. After reading The Atlas Six yet again, I was like, okay, I love fantasy books. And this book is very highly regarded right now in the fantasy sphere. So it also has a bit of sci-fi, which I've never read before. Honestly, I've kind of been putting this off because I'm scared that I won't understand it. That's how I feel with a lot of fantasy. Sometimes the world building is just a little confusing for me. Ooh, this is very floppy. That's so nice when it's so floppy that the spine doesn't crack when you open it all the way. I feel like I'm gonna put this one off for a while because I feel like I need to be in a smart mood. I'm irrational. Okay, I actually just went to the book section at Target and I've always known that their books are always 20% off for some reason. Don't know how they do that, but I've never gone to the book section in my particular Target and oh my gosh, their selection was so good. I got dial A for aunties because in my first book video on this channel, so many of you guys were commenting to read this book by Jessie Q. Sutanto? Man, last names are hard. This girl ends up accidentally killing her blind date and then her four Asian aunties come to the rescue. So I love a book with Asians in it, written by an Asian, I believe. I mean, that would make sense to me. Oh, Emily Henry wrote a review on the front. Utterly clever, deeply funny, and altogether charming. This book is sure to be one of the best of the year. 
Oh, wow. Listen, guys, I had to get Twilight because number one, I've been wanting to read this series for so long. I've read Twilight like three times already when I was in middle school. I was obsessed with this book. Like I remember how many showers she took and I just remember being like, oh my gosh, she's such a teenager. Like I can't wait to be a teenager. And I just reread this book over and over and over again. So I'm so curious to see what I think about it as an adult. Hopefully it still is good, but I never actually got to New Moon, Eclipse or Breaking Dawn. And I wasn't gonna buy them new because I was just, I was like, okay, they're definitely Definitely gonna be at a Goodwill or half price books, but I just saw this one at Target for 20% off and I was like, okay, I'm gonna treat myself to a new copy because I love Twilight so much. It's not logical. I'm just telling you my real thoughts. Okay, I bought Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo quite a while ago. Um, this is the second book in the Six of Crows duology. I read Six of Crows and I felt pretty lukewarm about it. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, you would have liked it better if you read the whole Shadow and Bone trilogy first, which you don't have to do, but apparently it makes you like the books better. But a lot of people don't even like the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So I didn't want to read those three books just to read these two books. And I basically already watched an entire Crooked Kingdom review with all the spoilers because I feel like I'm not gonna get to this. It sounds really good though. So even hearing the spoilers, I was like, hmm. But I don't know. I really don't know if I'm ever gonna get to this. I feel like one day I would just pick it up. We will see. <laughs> the Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I also bought this one a long time ago. It was one of those things where I bought probably four books and then read three of them. And then this one was the one that I didn't read before buying more books, just because it is really, not really difficult, but it's a slow start, but it is so, 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 so raved about. And I'm so curious to read it because it's basically about these two twin sisters who are black but could be white passing so one decides to live her life as a white passing woman and one doesn't do that and I feel like that's going to be very interesting to read about not only because it'll probably have some really cool insight into race but also because I am half Vietnamese and can be very white passing although me saying that every time I say I look Vietnamese people are like oh no you look white to me and then every time I say I look white people are like no you looked Asian to me so but yeah I'm very curious to read this and I know it'll be amazing once I finally get into it and look at this cover it's gorgeous and the last few books I'm starting this right after this video. This is Addicted for Now by Christy and Becca Ritchie. This is the third book in the Addicted to You series. Oh my gosh, guys, it's so good. It's so, 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 so good. I've read Addicted to You and Ricochet. This is the third one. And then you're also supposed to read it with the Halloway Sisters series. So I ordered some of those books online and they're coming in the mail. So maybe I will add them into this haul, but I can already tell that this series is going to just, oh my gosh, I love it so much. Like I don't want to read anything else other than this. I think I might just have to read the entire series of 10 books before reading anything else. Cause I can't stop thinking about it. This is the thickest one in the series yet. Ricochet was like 230 pages. So yeah, I cannot wait to talk to you guys about it. I feel like I want to do an entire vlog reading this series and maybe this series like binge reading romance series. Let me know if you guys want to see that because so good. that's all for my book haul. If you have read any of the books here, here, let me know which one I should read next or just give me a different recommendation or a video you want to see from me. And in the meantime, I will see you somewhere else on the internet. I love you so much. Bye.